Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the Grand Avenue Church of Christ, 619 North Grand Avenue. We want everyone to know, especially to those that are visiting with us, you are very much our honored guest. We're so happy and so thankful to have you in the audience as well as virtually viewing us uh, this morning. We hope, trust, and pray that the services that we render unto our Heavenly Father will uh, grasp your heart and, and encourage you and uh, inspire you to, uh, to want to do all that you can in the name of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, indeed, it has been uh, one of those type of weeks, uh, probably for most of us, not for all of us, a week of, of continued uh, turmoil in some folks' families and situations arise and trials and tribulations uh, that perplex us and, and uh, engage us and we have to call on God is always there, willing, ready, and able to take care of our, of our needs. And with that being said, we are so thankful to God on behalf of our brothers and sisters, family members, and loved ones. I don't know if you heard on the news last night, but um, one of the apartment complexes here in Sherman uh, caught fire. Uh, fortunately, our loved ones were not injured in that fire, but it was very, very close to them, very immediate to some of them. And was it in y'all's complex? Was it in y'all's complex? Okay. With, with, with that even being said, there was I, only all I knew of is one loss of life in that, in that whole idea. Let's keep that family, even though we don't know. I, well, some of you might know, but I don't know. But God knows. Who that, who that family is and who that person was. It's always sad to lose, lose a loved one. But God will work it all out. Indeed, he will, will work it out. Uh, that was that uh, my wife, fine, that we, she brought here to mm -hmm. visit our church. Mm -hmm. That was her in that uh, accident for her. Oh, really? She was smoking her uh, Smoking a cigarette oh. and it accidentally went off. Okay. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. So, indeed, and I know that Sister Stone is, I'm sure, is very troubled, you knowing her personally like she did. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but, again, uh, mm -hmm. we're thankful for what Sister Stone was trying to do mm -hmm. and her efforts that she put forward in trying to. This is get this young lady to come to know Jesus Christ. Thank you, Brother, Brother Strong, for, for that. So, Brother and Sister, we have so much that we definitely need to be uh, calling on God and thanking Him for. If you woke up this morning and you haven't thanked the Lord yet, there's still time. Yeah, even while I'm talking, you can bow your head and you can thank God for blessing you to be counted among the living. Because you know why? Because with all that being said, who's to say that we're going to walk out of here this morning? Who's to say that my number won't be called this morning? And with that in mind, with that in mind, consider where you stand right now with God. Indeed, Grand Avenue is blessed. We're thankful for every brother, sister, and family member that is associated with this family of God here that meets the 619 North Grand Avenue. And it's already been mentioned. We're thankful for all of our all of our visitors. So at this time, we're going to prepare our minds to go to the Lord in a word of prayer. I know that there's things on your heart that at the time of acknowledgments you will probably stand and acknowledge and that's well and good. Mm -hmm. Because you can't, you can't ask for too many prayers. You can't ask for too many, too many prayers. Uh, but my, my heart's desire is that once we, our mind is fixed that we need this from the Lord, be willing to submit ourselves that he may be able to bless you to get what it is you ask for. Because mm -hmm. it's one thing to ask, it's another thing to receive. And 
if we submit ourselves to the Lord the way that we should, God is just, loving, and willing to allow us to receive what it is that we ask, ask of Him. So again, with that being said, I ask that you would bow with us as we go to the Lord in the Word. Oh, but just before, I'm sorry, just before, just before we pray, I am so sorry. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I will, I will mention this at the, right at the end. That way we'll have the bulk of members in here, and uh, then I'll make that announcement. Bow with me. Father God in heaven, thank you so much for this wonderful day and this blessing to be here. Thank you for your tender, loving grace and your wonderful mercy that you have bestowed upon each and every one under the sound of my voice. We ask you, God, that we will live according to your will and your way. We ask you, God, to forgive us of our shortcomings, those that we are aware of. And then, Heavenly Father, that through a repentant heart we be forgiven. But those that we are not aware of, that we may have thought we were saying the right thing or doing the right thing, and it calls to fault to someone else, we pray that we will be able to recognize that and get that right before us everlasting and eternally too late. We thank you for the blessed opportunity to assemble in the house of worship today with these, our friends and loved ones and family. We ask you, God, that the service that we render unto you this morning may be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We ask a special prayer for your mass servant who's going to stand before us this morning and break unto us the bread of life, and that it may touch each and every one of us individually, and that we may address it accordingly as our lives stand in need. We ask you, merciful God, to just continue to always watch out for, watch over uh, our minister, Brother Shaw, both in his spiritual and in his physical needs. We ask you, Almighty God, that you would direct our hearts to be ever mindful that every breath we breathe, every step that we take, is a blessing from you. So we ask you, God, to guide us, go with us, be with us, abide with us as we go throughout the beginning of a brand new week, that we may conduct ourselves in a way that is pleasing and acceptable unto you. This is our prayer in the name of your wonderful Son, our darling Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. At some point in time, you want to get those books back in your hand. You all are going to be able to uh, sing along with me in these in these songs. But until that time, I'm asking you to lend your voices together, capping. Towards Canaan's land. Brothers that are working with us today with a pleasant mm -hmm. Brooke, I'm going to sing this song. Maybe she's starting that you all know that <clears throat> getting winded and things, so I'm going to sing one song and then you all can be prepared to come forward. Capping towards Canaan's land. Everybody all right? Yeah. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God, God is good to us. Amen. I will leave this land of bondage with this earthly treasures. I'll journey to a place where there is love on every hand. I'll exchange a land of heartaches for a land of pleasure. I'm camping, I'm camping for Canaan's happy land. You know that every day I'm camping for the land of Canaan. And with rapture I'll serve it. Crest to this grand, glory, hallelujah. 
1 through 6. That's John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. And the Bible reads, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. May the Lord have a bit to hear of you and do of the word. And it goes to heaven Father in prayer. Ah! Uh -huh. 
I'm so thankful to be here this morning, and uh, we snuck in a few minutes after 10, but you know life happens. And one of the biggest things you have to adjust to is life, because life does not adjust to you. Uh, so we're just thankful that we got here safely, and that Amen. everyone is here. Amen. God brought us here safely, and we are able to worship Him free Amen. of worry, free of hurt and harm. Our danger. This morning I want to take your attention to John chapter 14. And for those who are looking for me to sing, I'm sorry, I, I have a lot to do this morning, so I'm trying to <laughs> save some of my time before you turn me off. <laughs> John chapter 14, if you don't mind, stand on your feet. We'll read verse number 6 together. John chapter 14. We'll read verse... Number six, together. You have it? Say amen. Amen. Read with me. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. Who's that? Who's that? You may take your seats. There are many questions that can come out of just this one scripture alone. But today I want to focus just on one of the scriptures. I'm going to go through many examples trying to secure a, a foundation All right. of how we're going to move forward. You see, there is a question that's been debated over for several years. And we're going to try to deal with that question today, but in order for us to be able to have the best chance of being on the same page and answering this question, I have to lay a foundation. Right. I'm going to employ uh, your help. Whenever I say, knock, knock, you say, ah, uh, you're on it. <laughs> you're on it. I'm also going to employ a little bit of your imagination. So as I'm going through the examples, I need for you to see yourself in the examples. Is that all right? All right. Act one. Scene one. You're in a room. This room is cold. It's sterile. It has white brick walls. It has a mirror-like window, and you can only see yourself in. It has a table and two chairs. You are sitting in this room, and you know where you are, but yet you don't know why you're there. An unfriendly face, an unfamiliar face comes in and sits down and looks you directly into your eyes, asks you your name, and you given your name very reluctantly, and he begins to tell you why you're there. All right. Can you imagine the anxiety that's going through your mind right now? Can you imagine you're thinking about your livelihood? You're thinking about your family, what they must be thinking. You are thinking even about the folk on your job and whether or not you're going to have a job to go back to because you know where you are. And they begin to tell you, you are here because of one single piece of evidence. You are here because of one half-blind witness. My question for you this morning, if you are in that situation, or are you just going to sit there and allow everything that you've worked so hard for, your finances, your reputation, your family, everything, to go down the drain based off of one single piece of evidence and one half-blind witness. You see, I don't know, I don't know about you, but if that was me, I'm going to be asking for a lawyer. Because I'm not going down on any one piece of evidence, and I'm sure not going down off of one half-blind witness. You see, when you are trying to answer this question that I'm going to give you in just a little while, trying to answer it on just one single piece of evidence, and someone who's not willing to go to God's Word and see what it says as it says it, you are setting yourself up for disaster. And the one thing that 
that you own your soul is in jeopardy. Knock, knock. Who's there? Act two, scene one. You're in a room. This room is a familiar room. It's your living room. It's game night. Your family is over. You are excited to see them and spend time with them. And they present to you a game that says you have to take this jigsaw puzzle and you have a certain amount of time of which we're not going to tell you about to put this jigsaw puzzle together. But not only are we not going to give you a certain amount of time, we're not going to tell you, we're also not going to give you the picture. Anyone who's familiar with jigsaw puzzles, when you don't have a picture, what are you going to do? You're going to look for the end pieces, the edges. Because what? That's the easy part. Try to answer this question that I'm getting ready to give to you in just a few minutes without having a complete picture. You're going to end up with an incomplete picture of the Word of God. You're not going to know exactly what God desires of you. You're not going to know exactly who He is and how much He's really done for you and why. Because what? You're only looking at the easy stuff. Well, not done. Well, yeah. Act 3. Scene 1. You're outside. Oh. It's hot. It's in Texas, y'all. Well, well. Not only is it hot, it's humid. Bugs are flying around you. Mosquitoes are biting you. You're hitting them all over the place. And you look up and you find yourself standing where? You are standing in front of a maze. Well. Someone walks up to you and gives you two options. They say you can just run in. Trust your gut. Trust your intelligence. Trust your common sense. But you need to know. If you get stuck in this maze, you're going to lose your soul. Right. Then they give you option two. They say, now you can take a few minutes. You can look over this guide. Anybody ever looked over a maze and try, planted your way through it? To see how you're going to get through it? They say, you can look over it and you can, you can see how you're going to get through this maze successfully. But don't they tell you, but you still don't know how much time that you have in order to get to the other end. You see, trying to answer this question is like going through a maze, trusting your gut, mm. trusting your intelligence, trusting your common sense. You're going to what? You're going to get stuck in the maze and lose your soul. Not now. Yeah. This question has been around, like I said, for a long time. And many of intelligent men and women have tried to answer this question. But before I give you the question this morning, I want you to consider this pulpit. If every believer, and when I say believer, I mean everybody in the whole world who simply believes in the mere existence of God. Yes. If every believer would accept that this pulpit, right here in Sherman, Texas, Grand Avenue, was the only true source of the truth, they would have to come here. No matter where they live, no matter what part of the world they lived in, if they wanted truth, they'd have to come where? Right here. No matter where you took this pulpit. You see, I can pick it up and have somebody put it on the back of the truck and drive it back to Adam with me. But yet it's what? It's still what? It's still truth. It's the only source of truth. I could take this pulpit and take it down to Paris with me. And yet what? If you wanted truth, where are you going to have to go? You're going to have to go to Paris. Because you understand that this is the only real source what? of truth. Not not. The question is, what is truth? All right. All right. What is 
to our thoughts and our opinions. Brother Charles, what's the best football team in the NFL? I don't know. You don't know. Brother Boy, what's the best football team in the NFL? The Cowboys. The Cowboys. We would agree. But yet, it's what? It's our opinion about it. Because what? When you ask the question what, it is subjective. But when you change it from what to who, it totally changes your outlook. You have to look for something specifically. When I tell you who is, it's more why it goes from subjective to objective. When we understand that Jesus himself declared himself to be what? True, not a true. If he said a true, then what? We have a name to stand on. We can lean on our thoughts and opinions. We can lean on our intelligence. But he didn't say a, he said what? The true. The is a definite article. That means there is no other. There is no other option. There's nothing else to consider. Jesus said, I am what? The truth. There is no other. He's the what? He's the true and only source of what? Of truth. I can take Jesus anywhere and it doesn't change the fact that he is true. I can take him to Afghanistan and he's still true. I can take him to Asia and he's what? Still true. I can take him to Mexico and he's still what? Jesus. He's still the only source what? Of truth. Now, now. Who's that? Jesus said in John 8 and verse number 32, he says, I, 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 you shall know what? Truth and it shall set you free. What he said, Jesus, Jesus said, you shall know me and I will do what? Set you free. You see, in John 8, 32, the word know uh, is the Greek word genosko. And let me share with you what that means. That means it's a deeper knowing than just knowing of somebody. Mm -hmm. You see, you know, you think you know Brother Walker. Why? Because you know my name. You obviously know that I preach. You obviously know that what? That I'm married. You obviously know what? That I have children and I have grandchildren and I love them little rascals with all my heart. You know that. But you don't really know who. You don't really know me. You don't genosco me. It takes time to genosco me. We have to sit down together. I have to be willing and vulnerable enough to let you in my space and share my life, my being with you. Then and only then, you can what? You can genosco me. You see, you have friends and you have associates. Right. And we know the difference between the two. Friends are there through thick and thin. They're not around just because you have a little money. They're not around just because you're successful a little bit. They stick with you no matter what in your life is going on. You can always lean and depend on what? Your friend. An associate is somebody you can take a lead. Right. They come and go. Yeah. Troubles come, they leave. Yeah. Good times come, they come back. Yeah. You say hi and hello, how you doing? But you really are not really concerned. Yeah. Why? Because they are just associates. And I'm going to ask you this morning: If you think you genosco Jesus, is he your is he your friend or is he your associate? Well. Hmm. You don't have to verbally ask it. It's demonstrated what in our lifestyle. Right. Because Jesus says, if you let me keep my commandments, if you're going to be my friend, you have to do what I tell you to do. Now the question is, do you to no school him? Well, I hear you. You can't to school him on just a little bit of information. All right. Just because you know who he is. Just because you know he died for you. Just because you know he loves you more than anybody walking on this world don't mean you did no school Jesus. Uh -huh. And if you don't did no school him, 
then how is he setting you free? Huh? Right. Not only did he declare himself to be truth, he also declares himself to be the word. Where do we get truth from? John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them by the truth, thy word is truth. So if we think we have truth, but it's not predicated where? Upon the word, then what? We're going to fall short. We're going to end up with an incomplete picture, an understanding right. of God. Right. Right. That's all right. He further declares himself to be the word in John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. Y'all going to help me? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Verse 14 says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld him as the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Grace and truth. Yes, sir. Anybody need more Bible? 1 John 5, verse 7. Scripture says there are three that have a record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Right. Right. So Jesus is not only truth, he is the Word. You can't separate truth from the Word right. and the Word from truth because why? They are one in the same. Not God. Who's there? The question is, do we believe that all the Word is the Word? Well, right. You see, because to understand Jesus, to genosco Him, you have to understand from Genesis to Revelation, is all about Jesus. Right. In the old, he's prophesied. Mm -hmm. And in the new, he's magnified. Mm -hmm. In the old, he's concealed. In the new, he's revealed. But you got to know, you can't just go to one scripture and think you know God. Second Timothy 3, verse 16, in verse number 17, all scripture, this when is all and not all. If I'm going to give you all of my money, that means I don't have what? Any money left. I believe that my wife wants all of my heart. She wants all of me. Precept must be upon precept. Keep reading. 
Precept upon precept. Uh -huh. Line upon line. Uh -huh. Line upon line. Uh -huh. Here a little and there a little. You got to understand. Uh -huh. It's not all in one spot. Come on. Say that. That's right. That's not how God teaches us. Right. Precepts are commandments. Right. Commandments, one commandment, builds upon what? A lot of commandments. Right now. Uh, that commandment builds upon what? Another commandment. Right now. This line builds upon that line, and this line, and that line. Here's a little bit over here, and there's a little bit over here. See, we understand it with old MacDonald, but we get funny with God. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> old MacDonald says, Chick, chick, here, chick, chick, that. <laughs> here, chick, that, chick. And watch it tick. Yeah. yeah. But it's still what? The same form. Mm -hmm. Well. All the little ticks belong who? To old MacDonald. All right. Every scripture, no matter where it is, belongs to God. Oh, man. You have to understand. If you want salvation, if you want what God has for you, you've got to search for it. That's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus said in John 5 and verse number 39. He says, you what? You search the scriptures because in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they that testify of me. Mm -hmm. They all testify of me. All right. Now Jesus has been around for a while. He became flesh. But he was around before he became flesh. Don't you know, back in the Old Testament when the children of Israel in Exodus chapter 14 have been delivered. Mm -hmm. They got to a peninsula. God could have took them another way around mm -hmm. and went around. But he what? He wanted to prove a point to them. He took them to a peninsula. All right. In that peninsula, they started doubting. Didn't you just see what God has brought you through? Didn't you just see all the miracles he performed? Didn't you just see how you left Egypt with more than you ever imagined that you would have? And that's all God, and he done brought you here. And now you're going to complain? Knock, knock. Oh, who's there? Can anybody testify this morning that you've done the same? Mm -hmm. He showed us time and time again who he is. Yes. That we can trust him depend on him through anything. But yet, uh, we mark him up and we complain. That was extra. Now back to the rest. They're in the peninsula. And they complain. And Moses said, hold up. Just wait a minute. You're about to see something. He stretched out his staff. God calls them. Waters the part. And the children went across what? On dry land. But don't you know who was over there? <laughs> you get a minute to read 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 4. Because what? It says they was baptized in the sea. What? Mm -hmm. In the water. And what covered them? The cloud covered them. And that cloud was Jesus Christ. Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God. The Hebrew word is Elohim. That's the plural form of God. All right. Jesus has been around through the whole time. In every way. It's all about Jesus. Mm. And you really want to know Jesus and know truth. You have to accept everything the Bible says about him. Amen. In order to get the complete picture. You say you want salvation. Acts 4 and verse 12 says it's not in any other name. That's what it says. You can't find it anywhere else. And guess what else you can't do? You can't find it in one location. Come on. You can't find it in one location. In Titus 2 verse number 11. Ephesians 2 verse number 5. It's we, it's quoted a lot in, in other places because it says what? We're saved by grace. Yes. But it didn't say we were saved what? By grace only. Mm -hmm. well, let's see how grace showed up. Titus 2, verse number 11. What does the scripture say? For the grace of God brings salvation 
had occurred to all men. Mm -hmm. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation mm -hmm. has, and is that present a past? Mm -hmm. Y'all gonna help me? Is that present or past? Has appeared. That's past. That means what? It's already happened. When did this grace appear that brings salvation? When God sent Jesus into the world. He came into the world not to condemn us, but what? But to save us. We quote it all the time, John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. That's it. That's when grace appeared. Hebrews said it like this. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. That's grace. Grace is when God gives you what you do not deserve and can never earn. It's unmerited favor that's already appeared. So the other grace is part of it. The one else is part of it. Go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Let me get over there with you. We ain't got enough of time. Y'all ain't hung up on me. At least not yet. Let's go to James chapter 1. What are we trying to do? We're trying to lay a foundation and understand that what? That what God intends for us is in his scripture and he didn't leave anything out. All right. James chapter 1. Let me see where I want you to be. Hold on just one second. Verse number 21. That's where I want you. James 1 and verse number 21. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. That's it. Uh huh. And receive with meekness the engrafted word. Which is what? Which is able to save your soul. Wait, 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 wait. I thought it was just grace. Mm. I thought we were just saved by grace. Mm. But scripture says, receive the engrafted word, which is able to do what? Save your soul. Save your soul. Yes, we need grace. Yes. We couldn't do it without grace. Well, but we also need what? We need the word. Right. Talk to Right. Which means we have to have truth. Because they're one and the same. Right. We need grace. We need the word. Yes. And you know we need the blood of Jesus. Right. I'm going to get that blood. Go to Romans chapter 6. Did y'all get in the hair? We got folks who are trying to answer this question without all the right information. How we all, as believers of God, will be on the same page if we all don't have the same understanding. I'm trying to give us their all understanding this morning. The same understanding. Go to Romans chapter 6 and begin reading, please. What well, shall we say then? Mm -hmm. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Mm -hmm. God, God forbid. forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Keep reading. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus were baptized into his death? Keep reading. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. Mm -hmm. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. In the newness of life. We are buried with him where? In baptism. Mm -hmm. Acts 2 and verse 38 says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of what? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You have to what? If you want your sins forgiven, you have to what? Go to the water. Yeah. Why? What's in the water? I looked in the water. I don't see nothing in there but water. Hmm. Right. Like a couple of bugs. Well. <laughs> but the Bible says when we go to the water, we meet what? We meet the blood. How do you know? 1 John 5, verse number 8. That is three that bear witness on earth. The spirit, the blood, and the water. Yes, sir. Uh, These three are 
believe it. Knock, knock. Who's there? Truth is here. That's so clear. Truth is here. There's many, 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 many more scriptures I could give you. What time do I have? Can I take just one more minute? Well, I say one minute, that means more like ten. I hear you. I want to help us with something. Give me Genesis chapter 2. Verses 21 through 25. Brother Shaw, if you could get Ephesians chapter 5. And we'll begin to read that verse number 21. We have to understand that in understanding that the word itself is the only source of truth, we have to understand that when God teaches us, he's given us types and he's given us anti-types. The types were there to prepare us for the anti-types. Either Hebrews 10 and verse 1 says that, 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 that bulls and goats couldn't take away sin. It says the law was a shadow of the things to come. Right, right. But not the what? Not the actual thing. So the law had its purpose. It was what? It was full of types. Preparing us. God was pointing us toward where he wanted us to go. Right. Huh? Genesis chapter 2 verse 21. Start reading please. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. Uh -huh. And he took one of his ribs and mm -hmm. closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman Hallelujah. and brought her unto the man. Somebody. I'm thankful he made woman. Amen. Amen. Keep reading. And Adam said, this is, this is now bone of my bones mm -hmm. and flesh of my flesh. Mm -hmm. She shall be called woman, mm -hmm. because she was taken out of man. Agreed. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, mm -hmm. and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall become one flesh. That's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. Remember that. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember watching a show, and I'll be with you in just a second, brother, brother show. Y'all watch a show, and mm -hmm. they introduce these characters to you. And these characters are... Those ones that you can relate to. Mm -hmm. And you get all caught up in the character. Caught up in their lives. What they're demonstrating and showing you on TV. And you get so excited about them. And you want to see the next episode. You, you set your DVR to make sure you don't miss it. Because what? You want to know what's going on. You want to know how these things are going to play out. And, and then they get to the end. And it goes on. And you're like, well, what happened? Well, did he get the job or didn't he get the job? Did she survive the surgery or did she survive the surgery? What's going on? It gives you what? A cliffhanger. What brother boy just read was a cliffhanger. Well. That wasn't the end of the story. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter 5. Begin reading at verse number 21. Submit yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Uh-huh. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband, mm -hmm. as unto the Lord. Keep reading. For the husband is the head of the wife. Yes, he is. Even as Christ is the head of the church. Keep reading. And he is the Savior of the body. Keep reading. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, mm -hmm. so let the wives be subject to their own husbands in everything. God said it, I didn't. Keep reading. Husbands, love your wives, mm -hmm. and Christ also loved the church. Keep reading. And gave himself for it, mm -hmm. that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it unto himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle. Now keep reading. Watch this verse. Thing, keep reading. But that it should be holy and without blemish. So all men to love their wives as their own bodies. Uh -huh. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Keep reading. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it. Even as the Lord the church. Keep reading. For we are members of his body. Wait a minute. We are what? Members of his body. And then what? You heard that before? Well. Yes, sir. Well. And, then what, and then what Adam said? Uh-huh. Keep reading. And his flesh. Uh-huh. And his bones. Uh-huh. For this cause shall a man leave his father. <laughs> Woo! Keep reading. And shall be joined to his wife. Right. And they too shall be one flesh. Yeah. This is a great mystery. Mm. It was a mystery. It was a suspense. Right. It was a cliffhanger. Right. But here's the answer to the cliffhanger. Right. I speak concerning Christ and the church. Oh, yes. 
understanding. That's for prayers for my uncle, my mom's older brother. He has been admitted to the hospital to run a test. And I just want to make sure that we get the right prayers of the righteous so that the doctors can figure out what's going wrong with him and, and he can come home soon.
pray for the one that met his sin, wipe it away, and hold it against them no more. Heavenly Father, we got a lot of them that's going through problems. Heavenly Father, just hold their hand, you know, and just help them get through these troubled times. Yeah. Heavenly Father, because, you know, it's just rough out there. You know, these sisters and brothers just going through lots of troubles. Just pray for them and just help them get through these times and needs. Bless them as they go traveling down these dangerous highways. Help them get to their destination without hurt, harm, or danger. Heavenly Father, I know they need special prayers. So give them their special prayers with, uh, with special care, mm -hmm. Father. Mm -hmm. and bless all these churches of Christ all over the world. Make sure they standing by your word, mm -hmm. Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 through 30. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take Eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, Ye do show the Lord's death till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. But he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eat it and drink it, damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Our gracious Father, once again we come before you. Give it thanks, Father, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, sacrificing himself on the cross of our sins. Mm -hmm. Father, at this time, Father, we would like to ask you to bless the bread which represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to also bless the cup, the fruit of the vine, which represents the blood that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ sacrificed for us on Calvary. Peace, prayers, we pray. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
comes to all the service for our giving back. And I will be reading to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gift when I come. Let's go to our Father. <clears throat> Father God, once again, we come to you. Giving thanks, Father, for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us throughout the week. Father God, you do so much for us, Father. You do so much for us, Father, and given us even conveniences here in life just to make our walk here on earth that much easier. Thank you, Father, for the jobs that we have, Father. Thank you for our forms of income that we have, because you give us so many ways, Father, to take care of our family. Father God, at this time, we are asking you to bless this offering, Father. As we move on, and Father, we pray that each and every one here, Father, give cheerfully, Father. These prayers we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have been touched and moved by God's word this morning, say Amen. Amen.
dropping, maybe somebody's kids are dropping. Please hold on to your mask and throw it away in the proper manner when you, when you get home or wherever you may want to put it, but please don't drop it on the grounds. Uh, it's cause it needs to, it'll, it'll get picked up, but it's, we shouldn't have to worry about having to, to do that. So we appreciate that. Uh, I have one more announcement, but Brother Sean needs to say his first, and then I'm going to share this announcement with the congregation. I just want to thank Brother Walker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I tell you, you did. And I thank you and your wife for your love for the church here. We just ask you all to be careful wherever you go. And I was going to say that mm -hmm. about those that are gone. But we, we appreciate all of our members here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it. More time. Be careful because even though you have had your shot, you need to be careful mm -hmm. around the people you are around. Mm -hmm. Please be honest with all of us. If you're around somebody and you realize that that's what they've been doing and fooling around with the wrong company, please. I went out to see some folk in the hospital yesterday and they're asking me. Any other things that they say you could have, they would let me see anybody else. Uh, there's some COVID in both hospitals. Be careful. And so if I don't come to see you, it's because I got everything they say you can get to go down. So I will be calling you. And that's the best I can do because I want to live as long as you want to live. I'm going to take care of myself, and I love this girl right here, and my kids. So I ask that you all pray for us, and it's so good to see you, man. Thank you very, very much. And those brothers that are working are doing an outstanding Amen. Amen. Good to see you, too. Well, thank you. Thank you, Chuck. That being said, uh, the last announcement that I do have, and I ask you to pay close attention to this, is that Immediately when we dismiss, where I would normally ask sections to, to leave, uh, we want Grand Avenue, if you will just remain seated, we have an announcement to make immediately following. With that being said, Brother and Sister Shaw will be the only two that are going to be permitted to leave at that time. So when we dismiss, Brother and Sister Shaw are the only two that are dismissed. Okay? Everyone else just remain seated. I know you wondered in your mind, what's going on? Just wait, and you'll find out. <laughs> and it's a lovely thing, so don't be afraid, you know. So anyway, uh, let's go to the Lord in order prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you once more again for just waking us up first and setting us on the path, Heavenly Father, that allowed us to be in this place at this time. We thank you again for your man servant. Brother Walker. Yes. And we thank you for that wonderful, blessed message that the Holy Spirit put upon his heart. Thankful for the way he delivered it. It was delivered in love. It was delivered in a way, Heavenly Father, in which I'm sure that you're pleased with. Because it said what needed to be said about your darling son, Jesus, and his church. He spoke it from the Old Testament to the New Testament. There's no way that if you really want to know, that you could have missed it. So we thank you for his, his study, mm -hmm. ability, to be able to formulate a lesson, Heavenly Father, that will speak directly to what you want it to be said. We ask you to continue to bless he and his entire family thank you, Lord. with such blessings that you see that they stand in need of, both spiritually and physically and financially. Just be with him. Thank you for Brother Shaw and his vision to put men and allow men to stand in this pulpit and instead and proclaim the gospel truth. Continue to be with Brother Shaw in his health, spiritual and physical, Sister Shaw, their entire family as well. Now be with everyone under the sound of my voice that we may all be blessed with the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for those, but those that you have already set up that we have yet to receive. We ask a special prayer for our visitors. Thank you for their presence both physically here and virtually. And that they themselves can walk away knowing more than they did before they even viewed in today or sat in today about the gospel truth, 
by Jesus and the oneness of his church. And no one walk around thinking that they're right when really and truly they need to examine it to see whether or not they are right and where they're headed. So God, the guy, guy keeping the records be with all of us are traveling has already been mentioned with dangerous highways to and fro wherever they may go. And continue to help us to be all that we can be as we stand into this, this sin-cursed world, being in it but not of it, proclaiming the gospel of truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now, everyone else please remain seated. Brother Sister Shaw.